<laughs> we're gonna <laughs> get away from your past and now come to your present. So can you tell us about the day you found out that you were gonna be the head women's basketball coach at the University of Hartford? Yeah, I was. Um, Mary Ellen Gillespie was the act. She was the AD here, um, and she called me and said, "Hey, I want to uh, fly out." to Tucson and, inter- and, and, you know, interview you. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Um, and at, at the time, my current boss, uh, someone who coached you also at Washington, yeah. Adia Barnes, was like, okay, this is what you have to do. This is blah, 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 blah. What are you wearing? Um, you know, <laughs> tried to prep me because she had just done the same thing two years before, three years before. So, um, you know, she, she landed um, – I picked her up at the hotel. Uh, we drove and went had and had dinner, and um, throughout dinner we were talking. And I mean, I was so nervous. Um, interviewing is not my forte, so um, it was very very nerve wracking. But she made it very easy. Um, and while we were sitting there towards the end of dinner, she was just like, "So I want you to be the new head coach here." And I, because I'm a big teddy bear, started crying. Um, and she was happy and I was happy and, um, you know, I, I went home and, and I had some family that was happened to be in town. Um, and I actually still have the video, but I walk in the door and just, we all just started screaming and everyone was just so excited and, you know, started packing. So, so that, wow, that's pretty cool. So tell us like your first, how'd your first season go? the highs, the lows, and do you think it was successful? Um, I think it was successful in terms of what we all learned. Like, we all learned a lot. The the players, the staff, um, myself as an individual, uh, a staff as a group. Um, I think that the players individually learned a lot about themselves. Um, you know, we had several players who didn't play a lot of a minutes in college, who never really played, and they got to do that last year. Um, win loss wise, it, it wasn't successful. Um, you know, uh, I never want to have a one season, win, you know, win, win one game in a season ever again. Um, but I, I don't, I think that the entire process from, um, you know, learning how to close out to learning how to box out to, um, you know, being in your gap, uh, I learned a new defense. I never played a three, two, um, two of three of my assistants, one had run it when she was a head coach. The other two played it, um, and learned from, a, a, like one of the best that teaches it. So, um, we put that in and just learned a ton of stuff. Um, and I, I wouldn't take it back for anything. Cause I think, you know, at, before all this madness happened, we were, we were all feeling really good. All the players were, their bodies were rested um, they were ready to get back on March 23rd after spring break um, and ready to just attack everything in a way that I didn't see a year ago. Um, you know, we would have workouts and, and kids would be so anxious uh, and nervous at workouts, they would their whole bodies would cramp up or and they would have to leave a 45 minute workout or, um, you know, they would they would their backs would spasm. And I, I think they were all just nervous um, and and we just have come. We came such a long way, and I, I'm so proud of them. Um, they never stopped fighting. Um, you know, I, I, for some strange reason, decided I was going to watch our season over. And so I'm, uh, I'm on uh, the UNH game, our second conference game right now, and um, just kind of get I get excited, uh, as mad as I get rewatching it again. Sometimes for the third time, um, it's. Uh, there's just so much we can do better um, that I'm just excited to get back on the court whenever that is. So tell us what's the hardest thing from going from assistant coach to a head coach? Time. You never have enough. So mm-hmm. like as an assistant, your, your boss might be like, oh, shoot, we forgot to put this wrinkle in the offense or we forgot to add this or and you're as an assistant, you're like, no, nah, coach, we're good. We got it tomorrow. Well, then tomorrow goes by. And you were so busy focusing on A, B, and C that you forgot again. So then, you know, day three comes and you're, it's the first thing on your, 
on your list, but then something happened. Maybe someone missed a class or someone was late to list or, or something that you need to address. Um, and now you're focused on, you're, you're trying to correct that. And now you forget about this again. It's just like, there's never, ever enough time. There's never <laughs> enough time in the day. Um, there's never enough time to watch film or you know, watch enough film. It's like, you know, as an assistant, I would watch six games, six, seven, eight games of the opposing team. Cause, um, you know, I had time to do that. I was, I had one game or every other game with the other assistant and, um, for scouts. And now it's like, okay, you watch the previous game, you watch maybe three games. Um, so that was all kind of new. Um, I really liked to do, you know, watch a lot of film and get like a really good grasp. But, you know, that's why your assistants watch six to eight games and you guys put your minds together and come up with a plan. So, <laughs> well, now that we're ha- we have so much time on our hands because of COVID-19, mm-hmm. what are some things that you've been doing during this free time that you have? Well, I have more time to bug you. I'm just <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I've been, you know, recruiting like all of us have been. I think it's actually almost been a little bit easier in a way because now these kids aren't as busy. Right. So, and they're so bored. They're like, oh, coach is calling. Let me call her back or let me answer the call. Where before they're like, oh, I'll call her after I work out or I'll call tonight. So that's that's been good. Um, lots of Zoom calls. Um, uh, I've tried, been trying to watch a clinic um, or today I listen to a podcast instead of watch the clinic, but um, try to learn something new every day, whether it's a philosophy I agree with already or one that's kind of intrigued me in the past. Um, take notes on that stuff. Like I said, I'm rewatching um, all of our games, so I try to watch one a day, um, at least five in the week. Um, and then, um, you know, phone calls, staff meetings, um, lots of I go for a run, go for a walk with the dog. I uh, have a little weight set downstairs. I get my little lift in, um, some puzzling. Uh, I got a guitar. We're going to have a band. Yeah, so, we are. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's not going too well, but I, I text Naves the other day and asked him for some pointers. So uh, <laughs> he's, he told me if I gave him a hug, I could get some free tips. So I'm all in. Um, that's funny. And, and then, uh, you know, I'm learning Spanish. Since I have a Spanish player on my team, I decided I'd try to learn a little Spanish. Look at that. That's a that's a lot, Morgan. Yeah. Look at you. You're that's production right there. Long days. Yeah. You know, long days. You got to fill them with something now. <laughs> okay. Future. So two questions for the future. This one first. First question. Where is your next vacation gonna be? Oh Lord. Well, with all this pandemic, uh, probably Vermont. I'll probably just end up going home. Uh, won't have enough time to really do anything too crazy. But um, either Vermont or Priest Lake, Idaho. So Why Idaho? Uh, my wife's family has a cabin there. And oh, if you saw the, yeah, if you saw the cabin, you would be like, oh. Now I know why. Okay. Okay. I get it. Okay. So the last one, like what advice would you, you give kids that are looking into getting into coaching? Um, I think it's, it's a similar suggestion as to what I tell young, young people who think they want to play basketball in college. That's any level, level, you know, one, two or three, make sure you really want to do it. Um, because it's really hard. Um, you know, as you know, um, it's, there's more, when you're a player, you're like, oh yeah, my assistants, they talk to me, we hang out, we go to breakfast, but you don't see them, you know, doing the scouting reports or, or, you know, up late watching film or on the phone talking to recruits or, um, you know, filling out a, 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 a reimbursement form and all that, you know, there's, there's just so much stuff that goes into it. Um, you have to make sure that, and that you want to do it and why you want to do it. So if you think it's going to make you a lot of money, it could, like it could. But if, if your, your point is to, you know, 
I coached to pay it forward. My coaches gave me so much. They helped me become like a, a strong young woman. I was a, basically a little redneck from Vermont. Like I, I was, they just helped me in so many ways that, uh, that I wanted to do that for the players that I was able to coach. And so you got to make sure you know why you're doing it um, and, and that you really want to do it. Thank you.